Hey guys, I'm Gareth from Park Cameras, and today we are here at Sony HQ, where we're checking out two really interesting new lenses. So we've got the 600mm f4 g master lens here on the front of a sony a9 but we've also got the sony 200 to 600 millimeter f5.6 to 6.3 g lens both super interesting lenses i've had a bit of a play with the 600 millimeter so far oh it's so nice it's a g master lens so that image quality is is obviously going to be amazing but the thing that stuck out to me i've only been using it for those sort of 10 minutes or so just how quick the autofocus is and obviously the a9 helps with that but it's just lightning fast. It just locks on. The tracking is incredible. And I can switch between subjects like that. Oh, it is, it is a dream, especially for, for sort of sports and wildlife. Now, Sony have laid on a little bit of an event for us. So we've got a few people playing football. So we're able to kind of test out the tracking and the switching between subjects. So far, the 600 mil has blown me away. It's also actually surprisingly light. Now, I have got it on a monopod here. But you could definitely handhold it. I wouldn't want to carry it around all day, handheld shooting. You'd definitely feel that the next day. But it's actually totally doable for a few shots here and there. And then with the monopod, it is no trouble at all. So let's head out. Let's take some photos. Let's try both lenses. And let's chat about what these lenses can do. Roll intro. So I've got the 200 to 600 millimeter G lens here, and I wanted to talk a little bit about how it feels to shoot with, the build quality. Now I've been shooting with this handheld. I've not been using the monopod for this. And as you can see, the weight of it is actually not too bad. It's definitely achievable to shoot with this handheld for longer periods of time. I was shooting some of the football, I was shooting some of the wildlife over there as well. And it's actually really nice to shoot with, just completely handheld. Now part of that is that it's an internal zoom mechanism, which means that as you zoom, there's no change there in the terms of the length of the lens. The weight is consistent. It feels stable. And that's a really, really nice thing, both in terms of the size of it, popping in your bag, taking it out and about, but also in terms of the feel of it when you're shooting. You're not getting that shift in weight, which you get with some other lenses where they do pop out. It also means that it's extra resistant to kind of dust and moisture because you're not getting that bit where it sucks in the air. It's not kind of popping out and allowing dust in, things like that. Otherwise, the lens itself has the controls on the side, as you'd expect, and they are all very nicely, easily accessible, along with the zoom ring towards the front and the manual focus ring kind of in the middle of the lens there. Now, that zoom range, 200 to 600 millimeters, gives you quite a lot of versatility when you're shooting. You can pull right back to 200 mil and get a slightly wider view of things, but you can also punch right into 600 millimeters and get a really super close shot if you want to highlight something in particular. It's perfect for wildlife or sports and because the lens is lightweight enough to hand hold you can actually stay pretty mobile as well. Now that focal range also allows you to control your background and the environment in your photo. When you zoom in the compression is changing and the look of the photo changes a lot so at 600 millimeters you can have a very different looking background to 200 millimeters and again that just helps with the versatility of the shots you can get. Now it's been designed for high resolution right throughout the zoom range and that certainly seemed to be the case so you're keeping that consistent quality throughout. Now the actual image quality of the lens is great with photos looking sharp throughout the whole zoom range and I actually found it wasn't just sharp at the center of the image it was nice and sharp out towards the edges as well. In terms of aperture it's an f5.6 to 6.3 but because we're working with these much longer focal lengths the compression means you can actually get some really lovely out of focus elements in your shot and the bokeh is nice and smooth especially at 600 millimeters. It's also worth noting the colors look really nice as well. Now, this is on the back of the camera. It's a super sunny day. It's quite harsh sunlight, but they look really nice. I've got to say though, the thing I've been most impressed with is the autofocus. And this goes for both lenses. It really is just lightning fast. And with the Sony A9, I was easily able to track subjects as they were moving around the frame. I was able to lock on. I was able to switch between targets super fast. It really is amazing. I didn't even get one instance of it hunting or being unable to lock onto someone. And I was basically just relying on the AI in the A9. And it was absolutely flawless the whole time. Now the 200 to 600 has a DDSSM motor driving the autofocus and it is powerful, but it's still actually really quiet. So you get that lightning quick autofocus, but it's still nice and quiet. So this is the 600 millimeter. This is the F4, the G Master lens. I've got it on the top of a monopod here because it is a little bit weighty, as you can see, it's quite a big lens. 
but it's not so weighty that you can't shoot handheld. I did manage to do a bit of handheld shooting with it as well, and that was perfectly, perfectly usable. The image stabilization is great on it as well, which means that I was able to get nice, clean shots shooting handheld. But on the monopod, it's even sturdier. So that's what I've been doing. Now, the actual feel of this lens is really interesting because it, the, the weight is very much balanced towards the back of the lens. So the elements inside are all back loaded so that you get the center of gravity towards the camera, which means that it actually balances really well on things like the A9, which we were using, and other Sony cameras which is good because that was a slight concern going in because obviously the Sony camera is quite small. It's kind of the point of mirrorless. I was concerned that going in, these massive telephoto lenses would just feel ridiculous on the front of these cameras and they'd be so front heavy. But Sony have done such a good job in making sure that's not the case. I'm really impressed actually by how, how good it feels on the front of these small cameras. The lens is housing 24 elements, and as I mentioned before, they are all towards the back of the lens, keeping the weight centered close to the camera, so it feels good to hold. You've also got three fluorite elements, one XA, which is extreme, a spherical element, and an 11 bladed aperture, which ultimately helps to create super smooth bokeh. And at F4, it looks so good. The out of focus areas using this lens are super smooth. You haven't got any artifacts or weird looking areas. It's just really lovely. It also gives the lens excellent flare resistance and high clarity and contrast as well. Now, if you're using a converter, you're probably used to having slight dips in quality and it's maybe not as consistent. But with the G Master lens, it's actually able to maintain that high resolution even when using a converter, which is not something we're used to. Now, that means you can use something like the two times converter to really extend this out to 1200 millimeters, which is amazing. That gives you such a great reach using that converter. But again, it's the autofocus which has just been blowing my mind. So the 600 millimeter has two XD linear motors. So no gears, it's contactless, it's frictionless. And it means that the motors can move back and forth through the lens 60 times a second. That's ridiculously fast. And it was so noticeable while shooting. The speed with which I could switch between subjects and track them around the frame and things like that it's just like nothing I've ever used before. I've never had something this noticeably lightning quick. It's just, it's just amazing. Now, I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention the image stabilization in the lens. Now, I was mostly shooting with the lens on a monopod, but I did shoot a little bit of handheld as well. And actually, I was able to get some decent shots, and the IS was an essential part of making that happen. It actually works really well. Sony have added a new stabilization mode as well, mode three, which is specifically for tracking moving subjects. So when you're moving the lens around a lot. Now, that's perfect for all kinds of sports where you may be following people or cars all over the place, and it's just gonna make your life a lot easier when you're grabbing those photos. Now, both these lenses are gonna be available soon. I'll have exact details down in the description. I'm not 100% sure of it right now. But one thing I do know is that that 200 to 600 is a really good option. Anyone looking to get super into telephoto work or anything like that, that's a great option. It's a very versatile lens, it's a very nicely made lens, and the image quality is so good. And it's not ridiculously expensive. For what you're getting, that's a pretty good deal. So that's definitely a nice lens. And this, obviously, oh, what a lens. What a lens. So I've really enjoyed trying both of these out. If you do have any questions about either lens, do pop them down in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Make sure to subscribe because we've got all kinds of all kinds of content all the time. Make sure to like the video. That always helps us out. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.